This is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at our last video regarding deflation. We're going to look at what we call a deflationary spiral. Um, looking at this consumer price index for the United States, if we look at the year 2008 and that dramatic fall in the price level going into a deflationary, uh, go going essentially into deflationary territory, um, that's the 2008 economic crisis, significant fall in aggregate demand, consumption investment spending falling, and immediately you can see that it shoots back up. Um, that's a result of the central bank, the Federal Reserve Bank, and the central government of the United States immediately intervening because economists know that sustained deflation is very dangerous. It can begin to feed on itself leading to a deflationary spiral where the economy goes deeper and deeper into recession and unemployment gets larger and larger. So as a result of what we call expansionary fiscal and monetary policy, um, the deflationary period didn't last that long. And then we go back into an in inflationary uh, territory. So why is a deflationary spiral um, so damaging? Let's take a look. So here we have Scenario number three, illustrating a deflationary spiral. And we're using our monetarist model to illustrate this. We have our long run aggregate supply curve that's perfectly inelastic, our upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve, SRS1, our downward sloping aggregate demand curve, AD1, and the intersected point A, providing a price level at P01 and full potential GDP at YP. We're at full employment. And again, let's assume that the United States has a long run level of unemployment at 5%. That 5% of the labor force um, is their long run average level of unemployment. Um, the economic crisis of 2008 begins to hit. We want to remember that AD is equal to consumption spending plus <clears throat> investment spending plus government spending plus exports minus imports. And the onset of the 2008 economic, 2008 economic crisis immediately reduced consumer and business confidence. So consumer confidence going down, investment, uh, business confidence also falling. So consumption spending is decreasing, investment spending is decreasing. And so AD shifts in. So let's say it goes to this point, All right, 81 to 82. And we're going to assume that the price level has fallen from PL1 to PL2. Here's a new equilibrium where 82 equals SRS1. And we are falling into a recessionary gap. Output has fallen from YP to Y recession 1. Now we've seen this before, the creation of a recessionary gap in the Montrose model. We're at point B. The reduced aggregate demand due to the falling consumer and business confidence and the falling consumption and investment spending leads firms to decrease the quantity of aggregate supply. So they're decreasing the quantity of aggregate supply along their SRES curve from point A to point B um, in response to the fallen aggregate demand. And as they reduce the quantity of aggregate supply, they're beginning to fire excess resources like labor. So unemployment begins to rise from 5 to 10 percent. Firms are quickly trying to reduce their variable costs, right? And so they get to point B. But as we enter that recessionary gap, yes, we have a fall in the price level, which is a deflationary, or this is what we would call bad deflation, since AD has fallen. But in terms of debt defaults, households defaulting on their mortgages, uh, firms defaulting on their bank loans because they're getting less revenue and they're unable to pay those debts, you might see increased bankruptcies by firms that are not able to um, reduce their fixed and variable costs. And uh, that leads to increased unemployment, as we see, from 5 to 10% or the uh, incre um, increased cyclical unemployment. But what happens? Since we have more unemployment in the economy, 
we have more households without uh, losing some income. Maybe one spouse has lost their job. Um, so there's less income going into the household. The household being very nervous about what's coming next. Is the next spouse going to be fired? Um, are they be forced to work part time? So all of that nervousness and anxiety reduces further consumption spending. So AD shifts in again to let's say to AD three. Use a different color here. So we go from AD two now to AD three. And now we're at point C. So we're going deeper into the recessionary gap. We have another sustained decrease in the price level from PL2 to PL3. So more of that bad deflation. When we go deeper into the recessionary gap, why recession one to why recession two and perhaps more unemployment, maybe unemployment's now going up to 15%, okay? So more bad deflation, the price level falls, but we're going deeper into the recession and there's more unemployment. And that increased unemployment will create greater anxiety within households. It will increase their savings rate, reduce their spending, and thus AD has the potential to shift in again and again and again. And so that's what we mean by a deflationary spiral, that it just begins to feed on itself. We go from point A to point B, the rising unemployment creates greater anxiety, reduced uh, spending, more savings, which just causes aggregate demand to shift in again, and firms to decrease their quantity of aggregate supply, thus increasing unemployment, and it could just continue to shift into 84, 85, etc. So economists, knowing that that is potentially what may happen, they advise governments to quickly intervene, increase government spending, uh, engage in expansionary monetary policy to boost the AD back outwards. So let's go ahead and, and uh, analyze this as we would on a paper exam. As can be seen, we have a graph illustrating a deflationary spiral in the national economy. On the x-axis, we're measuring real GDP. On the y-axis, we're measuring the price level. We have a perfectly inelastic LRS curve, uh, long run air supply curve. We have an upward short run air supply curve labeled SRS1, and three downward sloping aggregate demand curves labeled 81, 82, and 83. Where, let's make it a few notes here, where 81 equals SRS1, which is equal to LRS. It provides an equilibrium price level at PL1 and provides an equilibrium, equilibrium level of real GDP output at YP. We're at full employment. We're at point A and the economy is doing quite well. But as a result of the onset of the 2008 economic crisis, it reduces consumer confidence, thus consumption spending begins to fall. It reduces business confidence, thus investment spending begins to fall. And aggregate demand falls from 81 to 82. Right? As a result of that decrease in aggregate demand, the quantity of aggregate supply decreases from YP to Y recession one, or from point A to point B, thus firms begin to fire excess resources like labor, causing unemployment to increase from 5% to 10%. Where 82 equals SRS1, we have a new equilibrium price level at PL2, and we have real GDP output at Y recession one, and cyclical unemployment begins to appear in the economy. Since the price level has fallen from PL1 to PL2 due to a decrease in aggregate demand, we're experiencing bad deflation. The, the rising unemployment uh, creates greater anxiety within the economy. Businesses become anxious, households become anxious, the level of savings begins to rise, the level of spending begins to decrease, so that further decreased consumption investment spending causes 82 to shift into 83. All right, 82 shifts to 83. 
Again, firms begin to decrease their quantity of aggregate supply from points B to C, or from Y recession one to Y recession two. Firms receiving less revenue begin to default on their debts. Firms unable to uh, minimize their variable costs and fixed costs go into bankruptcy. Rising layoffs, falling wages, again, reduces consumption and investment spending, and 83 has the potential to shift in further into a deeper recessionary gap. Since the price level has fallen from PL1 to PL2 to PL3, this is all what we consider bad deflation due to that fall in aggregate demand. And since we continue to fall deep into the recession, um, there's a the potential for the economy to go deeper into that recession. And that's what we mean by a deflationary spiral. Okay, So hopefully uh, we have a better understanding of why economists advise governments to quickly act when they start to see some signals of deflation within the economy because it has the potential to feed on itself and take the national economy deeper into recession. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment and don't forget to like and to subscribe. Thank you so much.